today. I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Sino sa inyo ang nainlove na? Ba't kakaunti nagtaas ng kamay? para may mga mag-asawang hindi nagtaas. Ano? Yung iba naman nagtaas kasi nasi ko nung asawa. Magtaas ka. <laughs> Have you done crazy things because of love? Ano ba, may, may isang experience ako. One day, si Jinky, we went to Makati sa SM at may nakita siyang isang magandang damit. At itong, itong dress na ito, talagang kakapanganak lang niya kay Rico during that time. Oh no, tama kay Rico. Siya yung bunso eh, si Rico. Nakita siya, niya, ang ganda nito, papa. So, trinay niya. Tinignan niya yung isang size. Hindi kasha. Yung XL. Tinignan niya yung medium. Hindi din kasha. Tapos, large pala siya dun sa damit na yon. So, Lagang nakita ko sa mukha niya, sabi niya, gusto ko talaga ito. Eh. Kaya lang walang size doon sa Glorieta. So pag uwi namin, kasi alam ko si Jinky, pag gusto niya yan, eh, yung mata niya medyo naniningkit. Yung gano'n. So sabi niya, ganda ng damit. At talaga naman ang ganda, kaya lang, pag malaki, eh, eh, pangit naman dahil kasi loose. Pag naman payat, ay, I mean, pag yung maliit naman, di ba, parang, hindi mo maintindi itsura. So, kasi kakapapanganak lang. So, talagang yung large sa kanya. So, pag uwi namin ng bahay, nakita ko talaga yung frustration. So, what I did the following day, I was still working in Toyota Alabang, and I'm a salesman there. And, alam mo naman, pag salesman ka, commission, ang laki ng commission dyan eh. So, the following day, sabi ko, hindi pwede hindi ko bilhin itong damit na ito. Hindi pwede. And during the time, meron ako i-release ng sakyan. That's why I know, may malaki yung co-commissioning ko. So what I did, I called up some SM stores near this place. So tinawagan ko SM South Mall, wala silang size. Walang size. Tapos, tawag ko sa SM Bikutan, SM Sukat, wala din. Wala. Tapos tawag lang ako ng tawag. So talaga na po prostrate na rin ako. So kinukuha ko na lang yung mga numbers. So tinawag ako yung mga numbers. Kung ano mga SM yan, di ko alam. And then finally, I found one na merong large. Alam niyo kung saan? Fairview. <laughs> Fairview. Sino, sino nakakaalam ng Fairview? Ang tawag namin yan, Farview. Ang layo. Di ba? Ang layo. So nung nakahanap na ako, sabi ko, ang layo nito. Eh, yung release nun sa sakyan, is around 4 o'clock, kukunin nung, nung, uh, nung may-ari yung Toyota car na binili niya sa akin. So, ginawa ko, sabi ko, hindi pwede, kailangan kong puntahan. So, what I did, tinawagan ko yung Thai taxi kasi yun yung taxi nung may-ari. So, akala ko makatipid ako. Kasi pag may may-ari na ng Toyota, alam bang, empleyado ako dun. Alam mo, pag punta ko ng Fairview, malis ako ng 5 o'clock dito, alam mo, kung oras ako dumating, alas 9. Alas, bakit sa traffic? At alam niyo kung magkano binayaran ko? 2,000. Pamasay. Gasolina. Tanong niyo kung magkano yung damit? 900. <laughs> Di ba? Crazy. Pwede ko naman sabihin na, Di bagay siya, pangir. Di bagay ang kulay, wag na yun. Pwede ko sabihin. Pero bakit ko ginawa? Kasi, mahal ko. Alam ko hindi masyado tong crazy ah, compared to others. Kasi mayroong iba mas grabe pa yung yung pagdating sa pag-ibig, yung talagang insane yung ginagawa. Halimbawa, si Dr. Jose Rizal. Sino nakakakilala kay Dr. Jose Rizal? Magtaas kayo ng kamay, kilala niyo naman yun eh. Hindi. <laughs> Pag hindi mo kilala, hindi ka Pilipino. Dr. Jose Rizal had the chance to live in in Europe. in the arms of a beautiful woman. Pero nung ginawa niya, he came back. Why? Because of the love of the country. The Christian martyrs, 
Pag tinignan mo yung mga story ng mga martyr natin, yung mga saints natin, they had a chance to live a comfortable life too. But they chose to be insane because of love. They give their lives for the mission. Tayo mga Christians, tayo, we are not yet martyred. Tama ba? Sino gusto maging martyr? Sige, sige, taas lang. Nagahanap kasi kami mamaya na ipapakaw para sa Holy Week Recollection. Yung totoong pakaw talaga. Eh, parang ganun, no? Totoo talaga. Di ba tayo mga Kristiyano, minsan it's insane. It's insane. Bakit? Kasi, ano sabi nga natin? Pag binato ka ng bato, ano ginagawa ng mga Kristiyano? Binabato mo rin ng tinapay. Di ba? Yung iba sa inyo, pinapalamanan pa. <laughs> para sosyal. Di ba? Naglolo ko yung asawa mo. Ang ginagawa natin, pinapatawad. Ba? Di ba? It's an insane thing to do. Sabi nung anak mo, buntis ako. Minamahal mo pa rin. Kahit takantaka ka, kasi lalaki siya. Di ba? Pa? <laughs> mahal, na, mahal mo pa rin kahit parang, ba ito, naluloko na? Eh, yung ganun. It's an insane thing to do. Sa mata ng mundo, it's foolish. But to us, it's reality. Because real love is foolish. Now, we cannot explain it why. Logically, you cannot explain it. Kaya nga sabi ni St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 4, let's read this together. We are fools for Christ. We are fools for Christ. Because if you re- really think about it, pag pinag-isipan mo maigi, what Jesus did to us is also insane. Let's read this. 1 Corinthians 1.18. And it says here, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. Now, siguro iba sa inyo, iniisip, ano naman ang kinalaman nung 1 Corinthians or about Jesus Christ in our series? Ano ba? Ano bang kinalaman niyan? Bakit but ko dinid this ka sa inyo. Want to know why? You know, sabi ng teacher ko in, in theology, sabi niya, the New Testament lies hidden in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament is unveiled in the New Testament. Nakuha niyo? Simple meaning, pag binasa mo yung Old Testament, makikita mo doon si Jesus. That's why the New Testament lies hidden in the Old Testament. Yung pag binasa mo siya, makikita mo, uy, New Testament yun ah. Si Jesus yun ah. You know friends, when we read the Old Testament, we should read it the way our church fathers read the Bible. Sino mga church fathers natin? Sila Clement, Clement of of Rome, sila Ignatius of Antioch, sila Irenaeus of Leon. Yung mga yan, yan yung mga church fathers. Ito yung talagang inaral nila yung Biblia. And the way they read the Bible, they use this what we call lens. Ano yung lens na yan? Typological exegesis. Can you say that loud? Yung ginagawa ko dito every Sunday is exegesis. Plashing out but today, what we're going to do is exegesis. Ito yung gustong sabihin talaga ng Biblia. You know, in the minds of our church fathers, they believe that the entire Old Testament points to one person. And who is that person? Jesus Christ. Yung story sa Old Testament. Pero ito yung problema ng iba sa atin. Pag nagbabasa ka ng Old Testament, minsan, para sang ni Yusef, Bakit ni Yusef, yung pag binasa mo, nakakatulog ka? Yung ganun, di ba? Parang pagbukas mo pala, parang naanto ka na, yung hindi mo mapigil. Or pag binuksan mo yung Old Testament, para siyang teacher mo sa science. Weird. Naalala niyo yung mga teacher niyo sa science? Yung mga teacher ko sa science, mga naging teacher ko, minsan weird. 
yung parang hindi naliligo, ganun yung itsura. <laughs> hindi ko alam kung bakit. No? Pero bakit weird? Kasi pag tinig na mo Old Testament, bakit ganun? Sabi sa New Testament, mapagmahal siya, pero dito, galit siya. O wag na tayong lumayo. Dito na lang sa Old Testament. Sabi dun sa Old Testament in Deuteronomy that God hates human sacrifice. But why is it in Deuteronomy 12.31, anong sabi dun? You must not worship the Lord your God in their way because in worshiping their gods, they do all kinds of detestable things the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifice to their gods. So pag tinignan mo, ayaw ng Diyos. But why is it in the book of Genesis, in the, in the story of Abraham, God asked, Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. It's weird. Yes? Tama ba? Weirdo. Kaya anong ginagawa ng iba? Pag Old Testament, anong ginagawa? Hmm, pag na lang yan. They just focus on the New Testament. Why? Kasi mas madaling intindihin. Dito, pag-ibig ang dinidiscuss. But friends, when you read the Bible, especially the Old Testament, you need two things to Remember? From the in, especially in the entire talk today, ha? Ito yung tatandaan ninyo. Two things. Number one, the entire Bible is one magnificent love story. It's a magnificent love story. And here's the second thing. Your life is part of, the, of that one love story. Pag binasa mo yung story ni Abraham, ni Isaac, ni Jacob, ni David, ni Joshua, you're not just reading about the, someone's story's life. You're also reading your own story. Because the God who loved them is the God who loves you. Now friends, if you, if you focus on the story of Abraham, the church fathers, they saw Isaac as Christ figure or a type of Christ. That's why it's called typology. Si Isaac at si Jesus may pagkakaparehas. In the modern lingo, si Isaac, yung sacrifice ni Isaac is like a movie trailer of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Why? Because of the similarities. And here are some of the parallelism between Isaac and Jesus. Eight. Number one, both are loved by their fathers, yet sacrificed by their fathers. Pareha silang mahal, si Isaac at si Jesus ng, ta- ng, ng tatay nila, but they were sacrificed. Tama ba? Sinacrifice si Isaac. Ganon din si Jesus. Number two, both are only sons. Kanadong-kanado ka ngayon, ha? Si, si Abraham, dalawa yung anak niya. Pag binasa mo, ha? Si Ismael and si Isaac. Kaya lang, si Ismael, when he was sent away by Sarah, yung nanay niya, si Hagar, naalala nyo in first talk, pinalis sila. That time, Abraham, ah, sorry, Ismael and Hagar was disinherited na disinherit siya. So, sino talaga yung tagapagmana? Si Isaac. That's why they consider that Isaac as only son of Abraham. And si Jesus, we believe as Catholics, as Christians, that he is the only son. So, that is another parallelism. Now, here's the third one. Both carry wood up the mountain. Sabi nyo nga, wood. So, parehas sila nagbit-bit ng wood. Si Jesus, ang binitbit niya yung album ni Kerry, Underwood. Si Isaac, si Victor Wood. Yun, kasi medyo luma. No? Pareh silang nagbitbit ng kahoy. Number four. Both are sacrificed on the same geographical hills in Moriah. Saan yung Moriah? Nasa New York. Doon nakatira si Moriah Carey. <laughs> Then, it's in, it's in Jerusalem. And that particular place is this. The Dome of the Rock. So, nandoon yan. Tapos, dito sa kabila, nandoon naman yung 
temple. And near that temple is where Jesus died. That is Golgotha. Now, para makita natin in the scripture, kung para may proof, oh, baka kasi tanungin kayo, anong proof mo na iisa yung hill? Let's look at what Second Chronicles says. In Second Chronicles 3 verse 1, it says here, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah. Because si Solomon, after David, he was tasked to build the temple in Jerusalem. And that is in the Mount Moriah. So kaya pag tinignan mo, parehas. Parehas. Si Abraham dun sinacrifice, tapos si Jesus dun namatay in that area. Again, same Parallel. No, parallel sila. Now let's go to the fifth one. Both are tested. Grabe yung test kay Isaac, ha? Yung papatayin ka? Grabe yung test of faith, no? Para payaga mong patayin ka. Si Jesus, he was also tested. But here's my question to you. Here's my question. Does God test us to know our faithfulness? Bakit nga ba kailangan tayong i-test in the first place? Alam niyo ba yung mga cellphone before lumabas yan sa factory? Tama ba? Tinitest yan. Tinitest. Yung ibabagsak, kunyari 10, 10 feet, babagsak yung cellphone. Tapos pag hindi nasira, ay tataasan ng konti, but 15 feet, lalagay yung cellphone, ibabagsak. Pag hindi pa rin nasira, 20 feet, babagsak. Pag hindi nasira, tataasan pa. Until such time, yung cellphone nasira na. And that's the time they will try to change some of its parts para tignan kung gano'ng katibay. Now, ito yung test na ayaw natin. <laughs> Pag narinig mo yung teacher mo, take one port sheet of paper. Gusto nyo ba yun? Di ba? Pag sinabi ng teacher mo, kakainis, quiz na naman. Yung, yung, yung ganun, may ganyan na teacher, yung minsan hindi pa nagtuturo, tatanungin ka na. May kaibigan ako eh, ganyan eh. High school, sabi, nagtuturo, nag, pag first day ng school, tinanong na agad yung mga estudyante, gusto agad magpa-exam. Alam mo, sabi ng kaibigan ko, Sir, bago kayo magtanong, magturo muna kayo. Totoo to ha, true to life. Sabi ng teacher, okay, ano pangalam mo? Joke lang. Eh, yung ganun yung, kasi may mga ganyan teacher eh yung papa-examine ka kasi ang mahirap ito yung exam one seat apart first day of school first day of the class nagtatanong agad sino si Jose Rizal? tatanong ka sino si Jose Rizal? first day pa lang tapos ikaw naman kabadong kabado ka na tama? Kinakabahan ka, baka maturo ka. Tapos nung tinuro ka, ikaw, sino sa'yo, Sir Rizal? Kinakabahan ka, ano sabi mo? Ma'am, matagal na ho kami magkakasama. Hindi ho namin siya kilala. Baka nasa kabilang section. <laughs> now, question. Teachers, task kamay ng mga teachers. Why do you test your students? Para malaman kung may natutunan. Tama? To know the level of our knowledge. So, balik ako dun sa tanong ko kanina. Huh? Does God test us to know the level of our faithfulness? Can I shock you? Hindi kailangan na itest ka ng Diyos. No. You know why? Because God knows you already. God knows you more than you know yourself. Mas kilala ka ng Diyos. Kaya alam ng Diyos na ano, magkakasa, pwede kang magkasala sa kahinaang ito. Pwede kang magkamali pag dinaanan mo ito. Alam niya yun. That's why, hindi ka kailangan itest ng Panginoon. Hindi. Pero bakit niya inaalaw? Ba't inaalaw? God allows test not for Him to know but for you to grow. Friends, God allows us not to see the level of our faith because He already knows you. God allows us so that we can see the level of our progress. 
tinitignan ng Panginoon para makita natin yung progress mo na saan ka na. It's true that God loves us as is where is. Naririnig nyo dito sa feast yan. Mahal ka ng Diyos as is where is kahit sino ka, kahit ano ka pa. With all your sins, with all your weakness, with all your faults, with all your doubts, with all your fears, God loves you. God loves you the way you are. But He refuses to leave you the way you were. Why? Kasi importante ka sa Kanya. Kaya mga pinagdadaanan mo na tests, hindi para sa Diyos yan, hindi para tignan kung faithful ka sa Kanya. Alam niya, hindi. Yung, dito faithful ka, pero dito pwedeng hindi. Dito pwedeng okay ka, pero dito pwedeng hindi. Alam niya yon. Para sa yung test? Para sa atin. To see our progress. Para makita mo yung progress mo. Kasi importante ka sa Diyos. Now let's go to the sixth one. Both obey their father's will. I have a trivia for you. Alam niyo si Abraham, in, in the Bible book, yung children's Bible book, pag tinignan mo yung story ni Abraham and Isaac, makikita mo na si Isaac bata pa. Siguro about, they portray about five years old, six years old. But you know, si Isaac, when he was sacrificed by Abraham, he was no longer a little boy. Here's the proof. Let's go back in Genesis 22 verse 6. Sabi doon, Abraham made Isaac carry the wood. Dalawa lang sila. Iniwan yung mga, yung mga, kasabi, yung mga katulong nila doon sa paanan ng bundok. Ang sinama lang niya si Isaac. At si Isaac nagkikerry ng wood. Na-experience yung paano magpalambot ng karne sa, sa, ang tawag doon? Kakahoy. Next, sino naka-experience na? Karne. Ganong karaming kahoy kailangan mo para magpalambot ng isang kilong karne? Marami. More or less yan. <laughs> Marami, more or less. Madami. E ito, papatayin siya susunugin, abay, mas marami yung kailangan, mahigit sa isang kilo si Isa. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya bata. You know, according to rabbinic consensus, eto mga rabbis ito ha, in their, in their land. Abraham, when he sacrificed Isaac, is about 120 years old. Isaac was about 17 years old or older. 17 years old pataas. Now, Here's what's, what's glaring. Isaac can overpower Abraham. Tama ba? Kaya ba ng 120 years old ang isang 17 years old? Kaya ba niya? Pag nagpambuno kayo? Hindi. Ako kaya nga kung di na nakikipag-basketball carry ko, naiinis na ako. Hindi ko na kayang baldahin. Dati nung maliit-liit siya, kunting ganun ko lang tumutumba na ngayon. Pag ginan ko, ako tumutumba. Mas malakas na sa akin. Now, can Isaac overpower Abraham? No. Ah, yes. <laughs> can Isaac overpower Abraham? Yes. No, tinitignan ko lang kung gising kayo. <laughs> he can overpower. Pero nung ginawa niya? He obeyed his father's will. Same with Jesus. Jesus, after praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, ang prayer niya, Father, if you can remove this cup, but let your will be done. Parang sinasabi niya, kung pwedeng tanggalin mo sa akin itong paghihirap na daranasin ko, tanggalin mo, but let your will be done. Here's my question to you. Can Jesus overpower God? Can He? Pwede ba niya sabihin, Lord, ayoko niyan. Father, ayoko niyan. Can He do that? Yes. Why? Because of free will. Pwede. Pero nang sabi niya, Father, let your will be done. Same. It's a parallel. Which brings me to the seventh parallelism. Both Isaac and Jesus was tied up. Pareha silang tinali. Let's go back. Oh, let's look at what Genesis said. 
Abraham tied up his son and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Let's go to John. Ano sabi naman ni John? Then the Roman soldiers with their commanding officers and Jewish guards arrested Jesus, tied him up. And also in verse 24, then Anna sent him, still tied up, to Caiaphas, the high priest. So pareha silang tinali. You know, ang ginamit na Greek word, or the Greek word that was used by the writer for the word tied up, alam mo kung anong Greek ang ginamit? Parehas. Akeda. Akeda. So makikita mo yung relationship ni Isaac at ni Jesus. Both were tied up. And here's the eight parallelism. Ready? Both are resurrected though in different way. See, si Isaac, he was resurrected in the mind of Abraham after three days when God gave him, when God gave a ram as a replacement for Isaac. But Jesus was resurrected in a true sense of the word. When Jesus died and resurrected after three days. Same. Why did the writer of the book of Genesis use human sacrifice in the story of Abraham despite God detesting it? Bakit niya sinabi, or the writer, ha, yung writer, not, not God, but the one who wrote Genesis, bakit niya sinulat pa na pinapa-offer kay Abraham yung anak niya, kahit yung Diyos, ayaw niya noon. Because Abraham is also a typology of God. It's a type, type of God. Si Abraham, kung paano siyang ama. It's a type of who God is as a father. Yun yung, yun yung dahilan. Gustong ipakilala nung ama kung sino siya o ng Diyos kung sino siya bilang ama. Now, mahilig ako mag-imagine. Gusto kasi na-imagine nyo para mas madaling yung, hindi, hindi, para magtagal sa isip nyo yung, yung kwento ko dito every Sunday. I want you to imagine si Abraham, he was 120 years old. Actually, 120 years old na siya. Imagine niyo, 120 siya. Nandun na siya sa top of Moriah. Na itali niya na yung anak niyang si Isaac. Tapos, sasaksakin na niya yung anak niya. Nyari, imagine, nakahiga na dyan si Isaac. Tapos, sasaksakin niya na si Isaac. Imagine it with me. Sasaksakin na niya. Kung ikaw si Abraham, anong gagawin mo para siguradong patay yung anak mo? Yung, kasi mahal mo yung anak mo eh, di ba? Ayaw mo masaktan. So, sisiguraduhin mo na isang saksak lang, patay na. Tama ba? Hindi mo gagawin sa anak mo na, ba, Lord, sa'yo na siya. <laughs> Hindi ka sasaksak na nakapikit. Bakit? Kasi, saan tatama? Braso, sa hita, sa tagiliran. Ano sa sabihin ng anak mo? Dahad. Tama na. Sentrohan mo na. Tatlumpot dalawa na yung saksak ko. Diba? Ang sakit na nun. Ano gagawin mo? Para hindi na mahirapan. Hanapin mo yung sasaksakin na patay agad. Saan yun? Anong sa ilog? <laughs> sa puso. Sa puso, diba? Hanapin mo. Ay, tuto puso ito. Ano gagawin mo? Doon mo yung sasaksakin. Tama? Sasaksakin mo. Para patay na agad. At para pag, kung sa kaling pagsaksak mong ganun, pumalag pa, hindi pa agad namatay. Kasi minsan, hindi agad namamatay. Anong gagawin mo? Itatarak mo na lang maigi. So, because I believe si Abraham, mahal niya rin si Isaac eh. Kaya sisiguraduhin niya hindi mahirapan. So imagine niyo nakahiga si Isaac, nakita niya na yung puso, tapos itatarak na niya. Yung naka, naka, talagang nakaredy na siya. Itatarak na. Tapos bigla na lang, ganito yung nangyari. Abraham! Abraham! Yes, Lord! 
my gosh. <laughs> Pero hindi ganun yung nangyari. Ha, baka basahin nyo na lang para maniwala. Hindi ganun yung nangyari. Pinigil. Pinigil. Bakit pinigil? Because God will provide the lamb. Hindi yung ram na nandun. It's just a representation. But there's another lamb. Sino yung lamb na yun? Let's look at what John says. John 1.29 The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, There is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Ano ibig sabihin? That Jesus is the Lamb of God promise to all of us to show His love for you and for me. Kaya kung pumunta ka ngayong araw na ito, natatakot kang harapin yung buhay mo. Kasi feeling mo, parang pinabayaan ka na ng Diyos. Kasi, hindi mo maintindihan unang, sta- unang araw pa lang nung taon, parang hindi mo na maintindihan ano nangyayari sa inyo nung asawa mo. Or, yung anak mo kailangang operahan tapos hindi mo alam kung ano mangyayari hindi mo rin alam kung saan kukunin yung pambayad or at the start of the year sabi nung employer mo you might lose your job or your employment might be terminated this year I don't know what you are going through or maybe some of you when you came here you have question in your mind will God forgive me of the sin that I've done in the past? Can God still love me? Can God give me another chance? Friends, listen to me. And listen to me good. God is telling you to the story of Abraham, if God can give his son just to show how deep his love for you, his love for me. God can also give his presence. God can give his power. God can give his provision in the times of your affliction because he cares for you. Because he loves you. That's why you face this year with courage. Huwag ka matatakot harapin yung buhay. Huwag ka matatakot harapin yung Kailangan mong harapin. Be of courage. Because you are loved. Close your eyes, bow down your heads. And let the Holy Spirit complete the message in your heart today. Father, We know there are times in our lives that even if we have been attending this feast, there are questions and sometimes there, there are situations that is taking our peace away. Yung kapayapaan namin nilanakaw. But we believe in your words. We believe in your love. We believe that beyond the situation, Lord, one day we will be in the land of your provision. Not because we are good, but because you are good. Because you love us. That's why this morning we come before you and just asking you to pour out your love to every hands raised today. Pour out your love and let your love cleanse us of our sins. Let your love give us the courage to face our lives. 
give us the courage to surrender our eyes of faith.